Now, I have seen multiple reports, uh, headlines specifically, that say Republicans outraged. And then they fill in their version of the absence of the national or the secretary of national defense or secretary of defense being missing. Is this a Republican issue? Is this a political issue or is this a actual national defense issue? I have no idea. That's why I want to bring on an expert, retired Lieutenant Colonel Dakota Wood, senior research fellow for defense programs at the Heritage, Heritage Foundation is an actual expert. Unlike me, who has a lot of questions with very few answers and doesn't want the political side of it. Uh, Colonel, thanks for being back with us. It's good to have you. Uh, hey, you know, it's always good to be with you, especially at the beginning of the year. As far as the word expert, boy, that is loosely used these days, oh. huh? Yeah don't, yeah, yeah, don't challenge me. That's what I'm going with with you because I've, I've, you've proven it time and time again. Yeah. Can you give us some, like for people who want their political itch scratched yeah. here, the, the people are losing their minds. But I'm, the more I think about this, the more it feels like. This is not good for the security of the country. What's the operational concern, if any, of what took place this weekend? Yeah, there's a domestic side to this and there's a foreign side to this. It was certainly irresponsible or just not clear thinking. Austin is known as a very, very private individual. He doesn't like to burden folks. He carries his own bags, those sorts of things. But when you are appointed to be secretary of defense, I mean, that's the sixth in line to the presidency, right? So, um, I mean, you, you can't just live this completely private life, uh, you know, in, in those circumstances. So, you know, the, the military itself needs to know where the boss is at at all times. I mean, if you can imagine a corporal or a captain in one of the services disappearing for four days and nobody knows where he's at, you know, and, and so, you know, that person will be called upon the carpet and punished in some ways, right? For the, for the, um, for the president or the vice president or any other cabinet officer to not know where the secretary of defense is for three or four or five days, you know, whatever that duration is, depending on who we're talking about, says something about the internal coordination and who's tracking who just in daily conversations. You've got the war in Ukraine. You've got the war going on in Gaza. You've got China doing crazy stuff. You have a near nuclear Iran. Uh, you know, the world is just a very complicated, dangerous place. And the secretary of defense goes missing. Uh, you know, the, the, the joint chiefs don't know where he's at. The combatant commanders, presumably, meaning, you know, uh, UCOM and Indo-PACOM and AFRICOM, et cetera, the regional commanders for the U.S. Uh, it's just very stunning. So it appears that there is a, a not good communication system in place in terms of people sharing information and awareness, right, on domestically. And then if you're outside the U.S., you know, if you're in Moscow or Beijing or Tehran and you hear about this, you got to be scratching your head saying, are you kidding me? I mean, what does this say about the U.S. military? So it, regardless of Democrat or Republican, you know, outrage is completely overused in D.C. Everybody is outraged about everything. But I think just in terms of perception and the functional levers of power and who knows what is going on at the highest levels of government, this is a clear breach of responsible conduct. And, and you know, clearly we, we, we want to know what's happened. In addition to why we see in the hospital in the first place. Yeah, that hasn't been answered either. Yeah. We're speaking with retired Lieutenant Colonel Dakota Wood. I uh can't I, I feel like you can't quite compare if if I had to take a day off people don't need to know my business I get to take a day off and somebody's yeah. got to be out there to cover me uh, I think that if you were in a public capacity the way uh, Austin would be and at that highest highest level it's just bizarre that so publicly we're finding out that the president of the United States didn't know and these other individuals didn't know is there a practical explanation that maybe isn't as salacious as just incompetence in the communication department as to why well, that might have happened? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, the most generous way is he's just private, went in for some kind of procedure, not a big deal. Let's not alarm everybody. We'll take care of things. Uh, some kind of complication happens, goes by ambulance to uh, Walter Reed National uh, Military Medical Center up in Bethesda, Maryland, and, and it uh, is introduced, you know, inducted to handle this pain. So, you know, that could have been a few hours. But when you're in the hospital for a few days, his aides, his, his deputy, uh, military assistants, I mean, there's a whole bunch of folks that surround a senior official, Secretary of Defense, Secretary of the Navy, you know, you name it, right? And they would know what's going on. And somebody, his chief of staff, should have said, 
wouldn't it be a good idea very quietly just to let the president know? You know, and, and Kathleen Hicks, who's the deputy secretary of defense, apparently didn't know that her own boss was in the hospital for two or three days, depending on the report that you read. So th- this kind of observance of protocol and just people thinking about what needs to occur at that level wasn't happening. So the other generous thing was it's just complacency, right? That, you know, the, the Department of Defense doesn't stop working. Uh, airplanes are flying, ships are sailing, people are training. So what does it matter that the Secretary of Defense, you know, isn't talking to somebody all the time? And if he's not calling you, well, how do you know he's not calling a thousand other people, you know, during the same day? So who would take notice of this absence? And it can kind of get lost in the myriad activities that occur on a day-to-day basis. But at that most senior level, the sec death <laughs> going missing for four days or more, it's just astounding. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, there should be accountability back to Congress um, as a mechanism for you know, informing the public. Yeah, it, it's 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 kind of mind boggling for somebody in yeah. my position that doesn't understand the operations. You know, I know how radio works. I know if people are missing, if people need to miss a day or something like that. I know how we mm-hmm. cover our bases. I know how. <laughs> We have to put, uh, it's kind of, people call it how the sausage is made. You know what goes on behind closed doors, but those closed doors belong to the American people still. And when the administration isn't informed, it makes me concerned that there could be other areas where the communication is is breaking down. And as you listed, uh, Lieutenant Colonel, there are a lot of things taking place in the world right now that require the full attention of our national defense team and the president of the United States. Do you believe that this is going to weigh heavily on our at least public perception that we've got our acts together here in this country on that and on that front? Yeah, I think that perception, it's just one more knocking out, uh, you know, one of the little bits of a Jenga tower, you know. So, uh, you know, we've had recruiting crises. We've had uh, reports of uh, mischief by senior officials uh, either doing their jobs or not doing their jobs. We've got readiness problems. We have backlog maintenance in Navy shipyards. Uh, We have the Army. It's the smallest it's been since prior to World War II. Uh, It's reduced in size by something like 40,000 soldiers just in the last year and a half, right? So there are all these issues. And then if you thought worst case scenario and you had something to do with nuclear weapons, the Secretary of Defense is second to the president. You know, the president would order use of, goes to the Secretary of Defense, and then that, you know, command is, is issued on down the line. So in a worst case scenario, if you don't know where your secretary is or if it takes a few hours you know, to take that off and a missile flight from Russia to the U.S. is 33 minutes long. Uh, you know, so time is a real issue. And, and if you want to be a private person, I get that. Don't become the president. Don't become the secretary of defense. You know, don't become the secretary of state. I mean, you give up some of those things for the obligation to do the things that you're expected to do. Since I have you on the on the phone, if you do have sure. one more minute to indulge me, I, I this was kind of developing as you and I were speaking here. But the secretary of state, Antony Blinken, uh, on the on the tarmac, ready to board a plane, it seems, has just stated that he that, that we are supporting a Palestinian state. You might need more information to comment fully on that. Mm-hmm. But uh, to see the secretary of state making those types of comments, do you have any reaction to that? Well, it's long been Washington, D.C. talk to support a two state solution. So a Palestinian state and, of course, the state of Israel. And it's kind of this mythical mirage sorts of things that foreign policy types like to chase. What what it's based on is the premise that Israel would accept a Palestinian state right on its borders, more likely than not that they, depending on the conditions, would the Palestinians be happy to have their own country alongside of Israel? And if you look at the last 40 or 50 years of constant attacks of the state of Israel, and especially the following October 7th, you know, does, does it seem reasonable that if you had the West Bank and the Gaza Strip uh, retitled as its own independent country, that somehow they would be happy with that arrangement and they wouldn't continue to attack you know, the state of Israel and eliminate it so they could have this Palestine from the Jordan River to you know, the Mediterranean Sea. So it seems very, very unlikely unless organizations like Hamas uh, repudiated their own promise to eliminate Jews and to eliminate you know, the country of Israel. For, so for Anthony Blinken to say, 
we support a Palestinian state, state, it's easy to say in the current circumstances, impossible to execute. That sounds right? like so, a political statement to me then rather than an yes. actual p- policy statement. They're trying to pressure Netanyahu, the prime minister there in Israel, to, to bring these hostilities to a close. But again, Netanyahu and his cabinet and Israelis in, in particular, you know, in general, um, are still dealing with missiles coming in from Hezbollah out of southern Lebanon and rockets and missiles, et cetera, and attacks uh, and bombs coming from Hamas out of Gaza and then Iranian-backed uh, militia groups in Syria. So they're still dealing with that reality that the United States wants Israel to kind of hold its fire and, and stop trying to chase down terrorists, right? So it, it's easy, again, to kind of comment from the sidelines when you're not the one being bombed. And it's a completely different reality if you're inside of Israel dealing with what truly is an existential crisis, you know, the elimination of the state of Israel. And that, that's the world that they're dealing with. Well, we are so grateful to have your time today to talk about these two important issues. Dakota Wood, thank you for being here with us. We look forward to another conversation with you soon. Absolutely. God bless. Thank you. God bless you as well. Happy New Year. Retired Lieutenant Colonel Dakota Wood, Senior Research Fellow for Defense Programs at the Heritage Foundation. Great to have him on and to see that news developing as the Secretary of State was speaking there, saying that the West Bank and Gaza should be united and that they support a Palestinian state. Hold on tight.